This might be a hot take, you know what, I'll probably catch some heat for it, but I bought the Rode Pod mic just after Christmas and I was actually super disappointed with it and here's why. So I'm fascinated with tech and my goal on this channel is to help you make your videos or live streams look and sound more professional simply. So if that's something you're interested in, please click subscribe and let's get into it. I'm gonna keep this one short and sweet today. What I wanna do in this video is show you why I bought it, why I returned it, and why I think other creators actually use it and have it sounding pretty good and where I kind of fell short and also give you an alternative solution for the same price point, a $100 microphone, dynamic XLR microphone, which is the Shure SN58. It's consistent, reliable, it's fantastic. I would trust this thing with my life. But anyways, we're gonna get into it, here we go. Real quick, I want to put in a disclaimer. This is all my opinion and honestly, I think other creators that use the pod mic Go for them. They actually do have it sounding really well, but my point in this video is to show why I had a problem with it and why I returned it. All right, here we go. So the biggest selling point for me on the pod mic was Tom Buck's video, which was the Rode pod mic versus the Shure SM7B, you know, parentheses, Rodecaster Pro. Now, I thought it was interesting because I have a Shure SM7B and I've been using it a long time. And so I was like, all right, cool. Is this a great alternative? After I was listening to it, I was like, that's great. I'm gonna show you a few clips so you can see the side-by-side -side of what he showed you. So if you're shopping for a microphone, at some point you'll probably find yourself comparing these two microphones just because they're supposed to be able to do kind of the same thing, record great quality audio. Okay, so after watching that, I was sold. So then I got the product and started my comparison video after using the pod mic for a little bit. And here's a few clips of that. Uh, it is affordable. It's only $99 on Amazon. Feels very durable. It does have a built-in shock mount and pop filter inside of it okay so now let's do some math here this is where the truth kind of started shining to me at least a little bit so in that video he uses a $600 Rodecaster Pro as his XLR interface what that is is that's what he plugs his microphone into it does some processing on it and then it sends it to the computer to receive it as an audio signal okay however that's $600 for the Rodecaster Pro plus $100 for the pod mic which is a grand total of uh, maths here is uh, $700, okay? So I was doing a similar thing with the audio box, which is a $100 uh, interface, which only has gain input using my OBS filters, and then also the pod mic, so that's $200 there. I was like, wow, what a savings. But you can tell a drastic difference, okay? However, I could probably get a similar or better sound using my SM7B, so that's the same math here, which is a $100 interface, $400 mic for a grand total of 500 bucks. So instantly off that setup, I save $200, probably have a better sound. Or for even more savings, uh, you could do a $100 interface, a $250 microphone, get you a total of 350 bucks for uh, beautiful audio settings. And after I used the pod mic for quite a bit, I started realizing and listening to other creators that it just sounds like crazy narrow. It sounds really focused, it's pretty harsh, and honestly, listening through it with like headphones, it just sounds like I'm listening to voices through a 1950s radio. And you know what, I'm gonna get through a few other clips of the creators I saw where I started to hear this and I could just, just was kind of sharp in my ears. So this next clip is from Nimmin Live. Strive to, you know, meet that standard or excel um, or beat that standard um, so that you can, you know, become prominent in the space around that. Um, but when it comes to... And you can hear there, he was just talking about, you know, tips for content creators, but I just don't think that that microphone just sounds great. And you could see in his later videos, he switches back to the Shure SM7B, the $400 microphone. Every content creator does. Once you start getting, you know, traction on your channel, you're going to have those people that do that sort of thing. So here's what I recommend. One thing I want to point out when watching these from other content creators is I want you to look at where they have the mic positioned in their mouth, like it's to the side or in front of. And some of them do use a pop filter to help with the plosives and the harsh P sounds. Another one is this is from a female content creator giving a review on this mic. And actually, she sings its praises and she got it sounding pretty good. And so did Nimmin, actually. But if you listen closer, it just doesn't sound full and it sounds tinny. Well, thank you so much for joining me in this female perspective of the Rode Pod Mic. I 100% recommend this microphone to anyone that's looking to pick something up for the spoken word. If you're podcasting or if you're a gamer or just a creator, ASMR, a, a Twitcher. Is that what they call the people on Twitch? Twitchers? So when you listen to it, you can you can hear a lot of, you know, it sounds real sharp. She even talks about it and you can hear a lot of the mouth sounds like, you know, lip smacking. 
which is definitely not ideal, especially for a podcast. If you're listening and you're not watching someone and you're only listening to them and you're hearing like their mouth noises, and breathing, very unattractive. Right now I'm recording off my Rode NTG1, which is a directional shotgun mic up ahead, but I'm gonna switch to the SM58 and I want, I want you to hear it. All right, this is the SM58. This is like what every vocalist uses live anytime. And I would honestly recommend this for podcasts. I get it. Oh, it doesn't look cool on a mic stand. It looks like a normal microphone. And honestly, who effing cares how cool a microphone looks? All that matters is how it sounds. And this thing sounds about beautiful. So I don't think anything can come close to having great rendered vocals through a microphone for a $100 microphone. Uh, maybe the Audio-Technica ATR2100, which I just got and I'm gonna test out. But I've been using the Shure SM58 for years, playing live shows, also recording other vocalists. And this thing is like flawless. I'm gonna move it around so you can hear. There's probably a little bit of noise through the mic, so just I apologize, but here we go. That's it, and uh, yeah, SM58. Boom, mic drop. Okay, so let me know in the comments below if this was helpful, if it brought to light a little bit something that you didn't hear before. Honestly, if you go and hear a few other content creators and, and you start noticing these things, come on back and let me know. I'm curious. So uh, other than that, I appreciate you watching. If you do like the music playing in the backgrounds, it's from a Spotify uh, playlist that I've been building for copyright free music. It's called Stream Tunes Lo-Fi Beats. Go ahead and check that out. Other than that, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video and stream easy.